Hey everybody, what it do? Welcome back to another vid from your boy Joe Van. It is officially Spooktober, you know? Even though Walmart and all these other companies were trying to say that started in like mid-August. I don't know what the hell they're on about, but no. It is officially October, so let's get into the spooks. For this video, I'm going to be doing something a little special. I was born in the 1990s, okay? So, a lot of popular horror film franchises were established in the 80s before my time. And so, while I appreciate their existence, especially in helping establish Halloween and just kind of the spooky season as this, like, mainline official thing, and it, like, just gives it, like, this really nice kind of culture of spookiness around it, uh, I don't really have nostalgia for it, at least not the same way that Gen X would. So, I decided that for today's video, I'm gonna be doing a millennial version of horror movies and that is by going over a tier list of horror movies from the 2010s. So let's just jump right into it. Tier list! Before us, we have 2010 horror movies. This tier list was made by Brennan Kelly. So shout out to that dude. There are a lot of really good horror movie franchise tier lists out there. But, I mean, obviously there's a lot to choose from. And some of them are like too long so that's why i decided to narrow things down this 2010s thing so starting things off we have a cabin in the woods which was i don't know if it was just produced or if it was also directed by now shamed hollywood dude buffy slash avengers guy joss whedon when i was watching this in theaters i was hyped i was really into it i haven't seen it in a long time but I think I would still have a good time with it. When it comes to horror movies, I'm a hype guy, so you make something like this, you know, it tends to tickle whatever that fancy is. So I'm gonna put a cabin in the woods pretty high up. I'm gonna put in A. Moving on from that, we have Chainsaw Massacre 3D. I never watch any of the Chainsaw movies, I don't know why. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise has eluded me. And, I, you know, it's because it, ju it just seems like a bad time. Because I haven't seen it, I'm going to put it in D. D will be used as an it's awful and or I haven't seen it category. Because this one doesn't have the haven't seen it category. Okay. Now moving on from that, we have the sequel, Nightmare on Elm Street. It was the first one that did not have the original actor who was playing the Freddy Krueger character. Instead, it was the actor who played Rojack and Watchmen. I should know the guy's name, but there you go. This one, I was hyped at its existence, and when I initially watched it, I was like, oh, yo, hype, hype, hype. But then the second that recency bias went away, I was like, nah, this movie's actually kind of very dumb. It's got a lot of high-end actors in it, but... Nah, I, I honestly, in good conscience, can't put it too high up. Like, it is not on the same caliber as Cabin in the Woods. So I would put the Nightmare on Elm Street in C. So it's still whatever, it's just a fun, dumb flick, but nothing of much substance there. Next, we have The Conjuring, the first one. People seemed to love The Conjuring. I feel like a popular opinion of most people is that between Insidious and The Conjuring, both with your boy, Patrick Wilson, they prefer The Conjuring. There seems to be this, this allure of like, oh, because it's based on reality, even though it's not at all. Uh, there's something better about it, you know? And it was made good, but I'm gonna put the first Conjuring in B. Better than Nightmare on Elm Street, but not as good as Cabin in the Woods, in my opinion. Now, it has the Insidiouses kind of all over the place here, so I'm not gonna start with this next one. I'm gonna do the first Insidious. Came out 2010. Uh, I watched it semi-recently, and it was like rougher than I remember. There's the cinematography and stuff, but the main concept was still there. Um, and, like, it didn't create anything new, so I don't really know where to put this one exactly. I'm gonna put the first Insidious. Honestly, I think equal B, you know? It's fine, you know? It's alright. And then Insidious 2, people said was worse because it was just rehashing stuff. Uh, but I thought it was perfectly fine. I, I put it as equal, you know? Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, who knows? You guys let me know. Then we have Insidious 3. Insidious 3, I call Doggy Doo Doo. I'm gonna put it all the way down here in D. That's what you get. It's time to move on to another franchise, and that is Paranormal Activity. 
Oh boy, I tell you what, son. When the first Paranormal Activity came out, which I think was 2009, I was in high school and I was freaked out. The first one started it all and its ending was ambiguous. And for a lot of people, they say it was the best one. I think I'm gonna put Paranormal Activity, the first one, into A. I'm not gonna put in S because Granted, it was an independent film. They, they didn't spend a lot of time making the movie. It didn't cost a lot of money to make. So it was ingenious from like a marketing and just like corporate standpoint. But there was a lot left to be desired. I think it did a great job and it, it started, it, it revitalized the found footage movement, but it also started a trend of um, strong returns for corporations, you know? I feel like the first Paranormal Activity was like the inspiration for Blumhouse films or something. They were like, oh my god, we can make so much money. Put one million into a movie, found footage it, and then send it out there, and even if it only makes like five million, we just made a huge profit. And that just started this new movement. So it goes in A, but not quite S, in my opinion. Next, we have the second one. Uh, the second one, I'm gonna put in C. It's not quite doggy doo doo, not yet. It was for a lot of people, but for me, it still gave me a little little jump here or there. But, you know, it expanded the lore a little bit. Was not as good as the first one, in my opinion. That's where it goes. Next, the third paranormal activity. This one, I feel like um, I'm going to put on par with the first paranormal activity. The third one is like a prequel. Uh, you know, no spoilers, but it involves other characters and, and it was like an origin story. The ending was pretty bad because it set stuff up to be really good and then just kind of flopped it a little bit, in my opinion. But I think they still did a great job with setting up the scares throughout like the body of the movie. Then we have the fourth one, and this one is absolute Dougie Doo Doo. I'm gonna put it next to Insidious 3 there. It seems like they weren't even trying, even though they were doing stuff like with the Xbox Connect showing what the demon looked like and stuff, it was still so stupid. And it didn't follow the original cast. Granted, how can it when like so many of them have died, but there's still at least one or two out there. And they kind of introduced them at the ending of the fourth one, but the fourth one's just bad in my opinion. Then we have Paranormal Activity 5. I genuinely, like even though it's a bad schlocky movie, I loved this one. Specifically because the ending just turned into an action movie. And then also it ties it back to the first one. So, like, you can say my opinion's trash on this one, but I'm gonna put it all the way up in A. It, it, it got me, you know? So I think when it comes to the paranormal franchise, all in all, a lot, of, a lot of higher tier ones there in my opinion, so clearly it must have this nostalgic effect on me where it spooked me and it gripped me. And so they scare me and I haven't really rewatched a lot of them, but I still, like, think fondly of them. And I think of my time growing up and, and uh, them being like a, a main installment where it's like every year or so you got a new paranormal activity. You know, it's like the Call of Duty of horror games. But okay, so now, uh, honestly, I don't think I've seen this one, Saw 3D. So I have seen the Saw movies, but I kind of stopped around the fourth one where I was like, this stuff is just too trash for me to watch. So Saw 3D, I don't know you, I'm going to put you in D. Next we have... Um, my fucking Hollywood daddy, Ethan Hawke, in Sinister. He plays a, a writer who moves to try to get inspiration, and he's looking into crimes that happened in the house that he moved into to see if that'll spark something in him to create his new next big book. And it turns out where he moved houses uh, an insidious, like, god or demon or some sort of creature, right? The boogeyman, if you will. Um, this one, it's pretty, like, low tier, but it was still good. I'm gonna put it in B. It had a lot of good jump scares, and the ending was a little disappointing. I think when stories introduce concepts and introduce certain stakes, and then the ending, like, everyone just dies, and so there's no lesson learned or anything, I feel like that's a bit of a letdown. Granted, it's like, yeah, it's a horror movie. It's one of those things where it's like, oh, all hope is lost. It kind of like gives you that spooky sense and then you leave and you're like, oh, but I feel grateful for being alive. I don't know. Instead, it's just Ethan Hawke just blindly 
going along with uh, researching all these family deaths and finding this, this footage. So the body of it was good and it was bad. It goes in B. Next, the Belco Experiment. I, I don't know which streaming service this is on, uh, but I haven't seen it yet. So I should. It goes in D only because it hasn't been seen. Moving on, we have M. Night Shyamalan's um, like beginning into his return to greatness, only for him later to fall off with The Visit. The Visit was good, it was serviceable. I'm gonna put it in B for those reasons. It had a good twist. Someone gets poo in their face. Uh, it's a good time all around. However, the kids rapping is genuinely awful. But what are you gonna do, you know? I feel like the visit was him returning to the basics after just doing a terrible job with everything he touched for the last 10 years. And then he went on to make uh, a film, which I think is in here, so I, I won't say. Uh, but then he, he fluffs it again later on. So, you know, M. Night just being M. Night. Okay, so this is interesting where the next one is VHS 2. I want to look for VHS 1 now. Yeah, it's all the way down here. The first VHS came out in 2012, and its first short story, not like how the movie starts, but once they start putting in the VHSs, absolutely blew my mind. I loved it. So while the other ones aren't as strong, it's hard to rate that kind of a thing where a movie is a collection of short stories, but just because of the first one and its nostalgia factor, if I'm being entirely honest, I'm putting VHS as the first S-tier horror movie of the 2010s. Very divisive opinion, I know. Come at me, please. That's what's up. There it goes, okay? It's like, I don't even entirely agree with myself, but I'm still putting it there just because of that first short story with the whole uh, night out or whatever that one was, where it's people putting on the, the glasses that have a camera in it to try to film like girls and like, it's almost like revenge porn almost but then one of the girls turns out to not quite be a girl. And that's, uh, you know, I'm not saying that. <laughs> yeah, watch it if you haven't seen it. Okay, so now with VHS 2, a lot of people were saying that this one was better. I don't agree. However, I do think it was still great, especially considering the, the other VHS sequels we get. So I'm gonna put VHS 2 in A tier. Really great stuff. I just loved that concept of a collection of short stories where you have different directors come on where you know you give them a good enough budget where they can make like something you know, a 15 minute story and uh just go over cool concepts which i think the first two vhs is did like very well very well but okay so now we have the conjuring 2 which was um, you know, made by the same director as Insidious and the first Conjuring, and I think that was his final foray into the Conjuring universe, because there was another one after that. And Conjuring 2, um, it also spawned a bunch of stuff, the Annabelle series and the Nun series and all that kind of stuff. Um, it all started to go downhill quality-wise, but the Conjuring 2, I think, was still serviceable, so I'm going to put that at B. Next, we have Annabelle. Which, funnily enough, I've seen... There's an Annabelle trilogy, and I've seen 2 and 3, but I haven't seen the first one. So I'm gonna put the first Annabelle in D, unfortunately. But okay, now we've reached uh, another old franchise comeback, and that is with 2018's Halloween, not to be confused with Halloween, or the 1970s Halloween. This is 2018's Halloween. So confusing, oh my god, but the best of the remake trilogy of Halloweens that started in 2018. This one was terrific, it was like the best of all the older ones, and yeah, I think the first Halloween that came out was incredible, and that's obviously why it kickstarted like an entire franchise, and I think this 2018 remake was done very well. The ending was like a little goofy, but it's still uh, just you know, good, it's the kind of hype you want going into Halloween, the, the season, not the, the franchise. So I'm going to put that up in S tier. That's right. Another one. People coming at me saying, no, 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 the originals were better. Whatever, shut up. This is a 2010s movie review, don't you know? Okay. Ouija, it looked so terrible, I didn't watch it. I think I watched the first five minutes 
on the internet. And I uh, just, I couldn't. I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. So put that in not watch slash also D tier, you know? Okay, here we go. This one's kind of horror, kind of action. You'll start to see as we get into the 2010s that it's not just a clear cut horror movie uh, list here. You know, there's a lot of popular horror movies that could just be considered thrillers. In this case, yeah, I think because of the jump scare element of A Quiet Place, it does have that horrorness to it, um, but in general, it's just kind of like a, a good movie. The logic of it is a little inconsistent, but that's okay because it's just a made up story. It's not real. So I don't lose my head over things like that unless it's egregious. In A Quiet Place, it does have uh, inconsistencies with the logic, but that's okay because it serves the like emotional story that exists, which is a family trying to exist in this post-apocalyptic life. And there is a mother trying to give birth while being quiet. Goodness gracious. So the first quiet place, I'm gonna put over an A tier. It, my girlfriend was so stressed out watching that movie. She, she said it was a terrible experience, but also great. Okay, and then we have the Babadook. The allegory of the Babadook, the whatever, whatever, it's meaning yada yada. The kid is so annoying. He's the worst person. Oh my god. I I just, it's too annoying. I'm gonna put it in C, because it's like, yeah, obviously it's a good movie, it's made well, and it has a good story, and it has these thematic elements of like, a single mother and depression and that kind of stuff, but the kid is just so annoying! Oh, like I hate it, I hate it, but at the same time I know it's like a well done movie and it has like a, a solid story. It's just so, the kid's so annoying. See, it is. Okay, moving on from that, we have a modern masterpiece with Don't Breathe. The only unfortunate thing is how it begins. It, it, it shouldn't tell you where it goes, but everything else is perfect. So I'm gonna put it in S tier. Don't Breathe, it has been confirmed that that director is making the next Alien movie, so I'm very excited for that. Says it's coming out next year, but because of the strikes, we don't know. I think the shooting has already been shot, so it's in post-production now, but no marketing's begun, and it's probably because they're waiting to see, because they want the actors to be part of it, which they can't if a strike is happening. So, uh, greedy execs, stop it, get help, learn what humanity is, and then agree to the terms, and then uh, the film industry can continue. Please and thank you, okay. Next, we have another modern masterpiece, 2017's Get Out, Easy S tier, forget about it. You know, very, uh, I know, hey, very crazy opinion here, thinking Get Out's S tier. No, obviously everyone loved it. It was huge. It was the explosion of like the, the Jordan peele verse, where since then he's just made nothing but bangers. I do still think that Get Out is his best uh, film out of everything that he's made, even better than Keanu, I know. But yeah, I, I still think that he's, an amazing filmmaker, he's an auteur, whatever that word means. Uh, top, top tier stuff. And Get Out was the beginning of a terrific series of films that he's made. So there you go. Next up, oh my god, Glass. One of the most disappointing, depressing movies. A uh, way to just completely ruin, like, a terrific setup. Boo, thumbs down. You, find, you drown Bruce Willis in a puddle. Come on, man. No, like, you should have known that that was a terrible idea. I don't know what you were thinking, bro. Whatever. Okay, next we have... I, like, I really wouldn't consider it a horror movie uh, franchise. It's more of, like, a comedy thriller, but Happy Death Day. The concept, it's not original. It's Groundhog Day. However, it's got this murder twist to it, where it's like, hey, the main concept of this one is that it's a girl just trying to get through her birthday, but people just keep trying to kill her. One person in particular, and she has to try and find out who it is, because every time she dies, she comes back. This concept of the Groundhog Day has been done in several other genres. There's like an action version of it, other comedic versions of it, and this one, I think, was done good. It was serviceable. I'm gonna give it A just because I, I liked the energy of it. Yeah. Next we have Death Day 2. Death Day 2, I honestly don't really remember. I don't think it was terrible, 
but I don't think it was as good as the other one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call it serviceable, put it there, you know? They were fine, yeah. Y'all think it's terrible? Well whatever, that's that's your problem. Okay, next up here, you know, hey, had to come eventually, and that is Hereditary, the movie I would recommend but never watch again. I don't know why the ending messed me up. I'm not religious. Why did it instill some sort of superstitious fear in me? I don't like this movie, fuck this movie, uh, but it's still really good. I'm gonna put it next to Happy Death Day, I'm sure that's gonna piss off a lot of artsy fartsers, but there you go. Okay, next up, Hush. Hush is controversial in the fact that everyone I've talked to about it said that they loved it. Obviously the concept is good, but something about it, I don't know if it's the way it was shot, or the editing, or the soundtrack or something, but it really did not connect with me. Um, I still appreciate the concept's existence and the fact that this was made into a movie, but I'm gonna have to put it in C. I know, spicy, spicy take. Okay, next we have another Insidious movie, Trash. <laughs> the, the Lost Key or some stupid BS, get out of here. Okay, I, what is this? I have no idea what this is. It's two balloons, so is it It Chapter 2? That's probably what it is, so we're not going to hit that first, we're first going to hit It. It, the first one, was very well done. I'm going to put It in A tier. Now, the second one, total letdown. I feel it's made by the same people. It has different actors, because it's like the kids are growing up, but uh, I don't know what happened. I just feel like they totally flubbed what they started with the first one. So I'm going to put It Chapter 2 in C tier, actually. They literally bully the clown to death. That, I, I, that just feels weird. It's like, huh? That's how the whole story's ending? That's weird. But yeah, there you go. It Chapter 2 is in C. Next, It Follows. This one, a lot of people said, isn't as good as the hype leads it up to me. Like, it leads it up to. But, in my opinion, It Follows was solid. Sure, it was slow. It doesn't have the best rewatch value once you like know everything because it's like really slow. It like builds things up so that your brain can get used to the concept of what the heck is going on. This creature that's just perpetually walking towards you. I'm going to put It Follows in A tier. Not quite S, but I loved watching it. I thought it was a great concept. There you go. Classic allegory of sex bad in horror movies. Yeah. All right, what is this? Stupid BS, another Saw movie. Haven't watched this one. Put it in D tier. Next we have Lights Out, made by the director of the Shazam movies. It was very gimmicky, but it was still good. I'm gonna put Lights Out in B tier. Yes. What's going on here? It's vi Okay, I think this is the, um... I was gonna say Lawrence Fishburne. What, what's her name? It's, it's, what the heck? Jennifer Lawrence. This is the Jennifer Lawrence one. I wouldn't necessarily call it a horror movie. It, ha it like it feels like a nightmare that's occurring. I really liked this one. Granted, I haven't watched it again. I think I've watched it twice, like when it first came out, but then I haven't touched it since. However, I loved the creativity of it. I s just dream sequences seem to agree with me, where other people say it's like nonsense, they don't like it. So this one's gonna be very controversial. Get ready, folks. Bam! Put it up there in S tier. Oh, I can already hear everyone screaming at me. I love the 2003 movie Hulk, and that's same thing goes with this mother here, where it's like I understand most other people didn't like it, and you know that's too bad. My opinion has not changed on the matter. I still love 2003's Hulk, and lowercase M mother exclamation mark gets an S tier from me, your boy Joe Van. That's right, come at me. You know where the comment section is. Okay. Next, we have Oculus. Oculus was uh, very well directed. However, it didn't click with me, but it was still well made. So I'm gonna put Oculus in C. Sorry, but that's where it goes. Another Ouija movie, Ouija 2. People say that this one was better, but I haven't seen it. So Ouija 2 goes in D just because I haven't seen it. And then what's this? Another Ouija movie? There's three of them? Stop it. Get help. There's three Ouija movies? I honestly didn't know that. I thought there was just two. That's weird, man. What the heck? No, it wait. 
Oh, did I just go to put Ouija away and then it didn't? I'm not seeing Ouija now. Did I just get Ouija'd? Am I having an aneurysm? Okay. I guess I am. I'm looking... Yeah. Both Ouija movies are in D tier. Okay. We're safe from the curse of the Ouija. Next we have... Daddy in Hollywood, Ethan Hawke in The Purge. This is the first Purge movie, which a lot of people say really is kind of the weakest. It introduced the concept of The Purge. Everyone loves the concept of The Purge. It is just America in modern times with like slight tweaks where it's like you do get arrested if you murder people, but uh, otherwise it's extremely accurate to America today. The first Purge movie, while we appreciate you, I'm gonna put you in C tier. It's just like a home invasion movie with like a really cool concept around it. And it ended up spawning just a bunch of other ones. So yeah, here's a whole bunch of other Purge movies. Purge election year. I'm gonna put you in C as well. Uh, is this the second Purge? I don't know. I'm gonna put you here as well. I mean, yeah, like they're all kind of trash, but fine. So yeah, I'm just gonna put all. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> any Purge I see, I'm just gonna put in C. Sorry. Okay, so now we're here with Paranormal Activity: The Ghost Dimension which used to be the last Paranormal Activity movie, and then they made another one, which I haven't seen yet, but I plan to, even though I know it's years old now. So, The Ghost Dimension I did not watch. Everyone said it was bad, though. Uh, so it goes in D, but again, I haven't seen it. Next, we have Pet Cemetery, which is a remake slash just another adaptation of the book from Stephen King. I didn't watch the original. Uh, I watched this one, and it was whatever. You know, production quality was fine. It's just a story about, you know, pets come back. No, it's a kid. I forget. So I'm gonna put in D just for being forgettable. Sorry, Pet Cemetery, but you did not click with me. Next we have Raw. I have not seen Raw. I'm gonna put you in D. And now we have The Ritual, which was directed by the same director who made the first VHS short film that I loved so much and the ritual is incredible. I'm gonna put ritual in S tier because I love this so much. I recommend it to everybody. Mwah. It's just uh, amazing. And so I think that director also made that um, lake house movie or something like that, House on the Lake. Oh wait, yeah, he made the Hellraiser movies, I think. The, the new one, excuse me. But yeah, so it's like that guy is just, he's a solid director, I think, in my opinion. But okay, so what on earth is this? Scream 4? Oh, I guess it is a 2010s movie because it came out in 2011. But um, yeah, definitely not the like top tier of the Screams. And it's the only one that came out in the 2010s? Ah, oh, that's disappointing. Because yeah, the now modern Screams came out in the 2020s, so it's not going to be here. But Scream is a fan franchise is very good. My girlfriend loves the Scream movies to death. She thinks the, the first one and just the franchise is incredible, can do no wrong. Scream 4, uh, while not the best Scream, is certainly not the worst. Uh, I remember liking it when I watched it. I'm gonna put Scream 4 in B tier. There we go, Scream is on the board. Okay, now we have Sinister 2. Obviously Ethan Hawke is not in this one because he died. I'm gonna put Sinister 2 in D tier because I did not watch it. Okay. Slender Man! I did not watch this. I know of Slender Man because of the internet, but I did not watch the movie because it just looked terrible. But okay, now we have Summer of 84. I don't know what that is, to be entirely honest with you. Sorry, haven't even heard of you. So you're gonna go there. Next, we have the last good M. Night Shyamalan movie. Came out in, I think, 2017 or 18. Split. Split was very good. Let me think how good it was. It did a terrific job at giving, uh, what's his name, James McAvoy? Who, uh, Xavier. Gave Xavier a great range because he just played multiple characters because he had the split personality disorder. And I really like where they took the character at the end of the movie. I feel like they could have gone like a, a, like a supernatural route or something. And you could say maybe they did because of how outrageous it is, like that wall climbing scene that he does. But 
I think it's just enough on like the outlandish spectrum where it's not quite in the realm of like sci-fi fantasy. I think it's still grounded enough. I love Split. I think I've only seen it a couple times now, but um, I'm going to put Split in A. I think it was a very good thriller. Yes. And then they ruined it with Glass. But okay. So now we have uh, The Strangers 2. The first one was like, this is based on true events, and it was trying to be very serious. And then The Strangers 2 is like, this is the 80s, boy, wow, wow. So a very tonally different. So I don't even know why they decided to make it like a sequel thing. Probably just because they liked the look of the guy with the bag on his head and the girl with the masks. But it was fine. I'm going to put The Strangers 2 in C. It was serviceable enough. Okay. Now we have The Nun, a spinoff from, was it uh, The Conjuring? I think so, yeah, from The Conjuring 2, that's when The Nun was introduced. Then she got her own movie. I thought it was schlocky. Did I think it was so schlocky it deserves a D? No, I think I'm gonna put it in C, because I think it was cool, where they had the blood of Christ and she fucking like snapped it out of the glass and threw it at the nun demon and it like burned her. I thought that was very heavy metal, it was very rock and roll. So for that reason alone, it goes in C. Okay, next we have The Boy, which I did not watch. I know that it got a sequel that some people loved, some people hated. It goes in the didn't watch. Next we have The Bye Bye Man. Yeah, I've not seen The Bye Bye Man and I do not intend to. D for get your diddly ass out of here. Okay, now we have La Lerona. I have not seen that one. It's uh, basically just the woman in black again, and except this time it doesn't have, uh, what's his name? I was about to say Daniel Craig. D something Cliff, Harry Potter, you know what I'm talking about. So, did not watch this one. Next we have The Witch. The Witch was very good. It, it was a terrific uh, jumping off point for that director, which later, uh, The Lighthouse and the Northmen, I think. Yeah, and he's all about like language accuracy but then he kind of wasn't for the Northmen because they were speaking English, which they wouldn't, obviously. But yeah, this guy loves history. He's an attention to detail freak. The Witch was very good. I'm gonna put it in A. I think it was very good. It was terrific, but not quite uh, perfect in my mind. Next we got Unfriended, the Unfriended franchise. Very goofy, very dumb. I'm gonna put the first Unfriended it's schlock, but it's entertaining, so it goes next to The Nun. And then with Unfriended 2, Dark Web, is it worse? Because I think it's equally as schlocky, but um, I don't remember like absolutely hating it, but it may have just been because I was half watching, I don't know. But I'm gonna put it next to that as well. It's serviceable, whatever, you know, it's stupid. It's not like uh, I wasn't offended watching it. Okay, now we have a sequel. I mean, wait, no, it's not. I was about to say, it's a sequel to Get Out. It's not that at all. It's just the next movie that Jordan Peele made, Us. Us is similar to Get Out in that it is a conspiratorial film. There is some sort of secret that is being unraveled, uh, you know, between us, the audience, and the characters in the movie. However, this one is not as strong as Get Out. And in my opinion, I think Us between the three um, thriller slash horror movies that Jordan Peele has made, I think is the weakest one. It, it's incredible acting, of course, but the plot, I think, could have used some revisions. So I'm gonna put us in B tier. Okay, next we have Velvet Buzzsaw. What an offense to the eyes. It gets a D, cause it's just stupid. The Everything about it is just like, no. I don't know how else to describe it. It's supposed to be like this supernatural cursed art that art dealers are selling. And so the movie's like trying to be thematic where it has like this element of, oh, it, we're commenting on like the predatory nature of the art dealer industry. But then also it's just not at all. Like it's the most shallow, stupid service level movie ever. So uh, no, go away, Velvet Buzzsaw. Okay, and now to the final film on this tier list. We have Your Next, and that is uh, uh, one of the directors from the VHS short films and like a bunch of actors from them as well. So it's basically just kind of made from the same team of people. 
Your Next I thought was very good. It was a solid thriller. It, it doesn't necessarily do anything new, but I just think it was a very refreshing home invasion style movie. I feel like Your Next is like the good version of The Strangers, if you know what I mean. You know, The Strangers, listen, still, the first one, even though the plot was stupid, it was still extremely scary at the beginning, like, it's, its ability to build up that tension of, like, being stalked before the actual horror element starts was the best part of that movie. And Your Next, I feel like it starts off light rather than tension, but then that tension builds up as time goes on. It's almost like a half comedy, half horror thriller. Your Next was very good. I'm gonna put it in A tier. Boom! Okay, there you go, folks. Take a look, take a look. Let me see if I can actually move myself so you can uh, get a better visualization here. I'm shrinking! Help! Ah! But there you go. That is every single movie from the 2010s. Of course, no, that is not the case at all, but that's, uh, that's everything that was on this tier list. You know, the person who made this, this was their sort of collection of horror movies from the 2010s, and solid stuff. Uh, it's a little unfortunate that D has the most movies in it, but that's horror movies for you. Am I right, folks? You know? It's kind of like pizza, where even if it's bad, it's good. But either way, hope you guys had a great uh, little adventure with me going through those horror movies. I had a fun time making it, and obviously let me know your opinions, where you differ from, where I rank stuff in the comments below. Thank you guys as always for checking this one out. I hope you have a very spooky Halloween season, and until next time, ciao for now. Peace! Booga 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 booga. <laughs>